So let me introduce quickly our last speaker of the day, Annabelle Dolidon from Portland State University. And the title of her talk is the title of her OER, Citoyen, Citoyenne. Um, and Annabelle, c'est à vous maintenant. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I've listened to some amazing uh, projects and uh, today, so that was very inspiring. And I have now all that context to present you mine, which is um, much less technological. I'm very impressed by all those websites and uh, Quizlets and everything. So my project um, is uh, Citoyenne. And uh, it's an open source textbook that you can find on the uh, PDX Scholar platform of the Library of Portland State University. So today I wanna show you what I did. Um, this is my second open source textbook. I've done two with publishers uh, and I've had ideas that I know either would not work with a publisher or I wouldn't necessarily have the freedom that I wanted to, to put certain content. So I went for this. So I have one on um, science fiction short stories that are used to oh, um, more at the advanced level. And Citoyen was released uh, last fall and it has almost, I mean, 4,800 downloads. Um, the difference between the first one and the second one for me, because um, I learned from the first one, when I did Histoire d'Avenir with my colleague, Stéphanie Roulon, we could not track uh, who was using it. So I have a report every month of the number of downloads and around the world there are dots, apparently lot, lots of downloads in Lebanon or some places I did not you know, think about. But I don't know how people are using it. I don't know if they're teaching with it. So what I did also when I was um, thinking about Citoyen is to have a Google site that I would manage so that people who teach with it would ask me access. It's free, obviously, but I could more um, exchange information with people interested in teaching with it. So I know now that people are actually teaching with this book. Um, and it's always nice to know what people are doing with it. Um, so the reason why I did this book is I had an idea. I wanted to do something a little different. And also because I thought there was uh, some sort of a, um, something lacking in what was out there. Um, there are many very good textbooks out there, but to me, there are some issues that uh, at least my students care about nowadays. Um, diversity, inclusion, um, gender identity, that I didn't find much in other textbooks. Um, so I wanted them to practice the language, but also um, feel that they were included in this language. So I tried to work on that. So I used inclusive writing for um, uh, all the um, instructions, for example, um, not in the authentic documents. Obviously I did not change the content there, um, I try to include cultural content that would go beyond what is often covered. So there's no food chapter there. I mean, it's, I use it in third year. So they've done it in first year and then second year. And so um, I didn't think that I would have to do that. Um, oh, not yet. My PowerPoint is moving by itself. Sorry. I don't know why. Okay. Um, so I try to talk about things that we don't often talk about at least in length in some classes. Um, most of the activities and the discussion questions are trying to engage students to have their own opinion uh, on things and to develop their own ideas. And that goes into the next bullet point, which is to motivate them to search for answers. So there are quite a few um, activities that send them out there um, to uh, bring back information and base their opinion also on the information that they found. Um, I want them to be curious. So my objective is to teach them in a way that they will continue to be curious afterwards. Um, I also, that was later in the project, I included some creative activities. Um, it's a conversation textbook, but sometimes they need to relax their mind. So um, I'll show you some examples of like, so crafts that I do or, or um, crosswords or things like that. 
Um, allow them to be different and to be themselves is a big deal. And it's um, addressed in the first um, chapter. And I'll show you how I try to do this. The point for me is that um, a lot of what I find in, in some textbook is a lot about the target culture. And one thing that I wanted to do uh, is, of course, to continue that exploration of the target cultures, but also for them to talk about themselves in the target language. Because when students go to study in Quebec or in France or, or in other French speaking countries, um, nobody's going to ask them about France. They're going to ask them about them. them. They're going to ask about American culture. So there are a few activities also in the book that um, um, engages them to talk about themselves and their own culture in the target language. So real tools that goes into the vocabulary. So of course I included some more slang or even some, a, a few swear words um, because when they go there, that's what they will hear. And really the ultimate motivation is to send them and to prepare them to go. Um, that's always been my, uh, my objective, even in the, um, the first textbooks to do that. Um, so I'll show you some examples of how it works. So um, let's look at some sample pages. So I'm going to switch the share to um, here. So if you, um, it's very easy to find. I think there are several platforms now that link to it because uh, I know people who found the book through other platforms. But this is um, uh, the uh, Portland State University platform. And when you look in the catalog, that's the page that you're going to find. If you click on the download here, you get a Word version. Uh, so it's easier for you to edit, obviously, if you want to edit the book and you know adapt it or um, add your own material in it or just use some a, a few parts. Um, and then um, there's the PDF. Do you see the PDF? Can someone make sure that um, you see the cover of the book here? Okay, thank you. Yes, yes, we can see it. Um, okay. So for the illustrations, um, so I had very little money. So it's kind of a homemade project. Um, I had, um, um, I hired uh, a stu two students. So a student did the illustrations and the other students did the uh, editing of the book uh, with Word, and they both did a very good job. So I'm glad I could also include students in the making of this book. And then when I presented this project for the first time two years ago in another conference, um, and uh, I opened it to collaboration, and somebody uh, contacted me uh, and said that they wanted to help. So uh, Melissa Vere. Uh, contributed also um, some um, activities and uh, cultural content to this book. So that's how I did. Otherwise, it's really just a Word document and all the um, activities here are new. So because I was not finding really the content that I wanted out there, I did not do that recycling that I've heard a lot today. And I, I think that's wonderful. I'm going to do probably more of that. Um, but um, there's no video with this um, textbook. It's the book and the website. So I'll show you in terms of tech, it's very, very low tech. Um, so there are five chapters um, that are quite large. Um, the first one um, covers, uh, again, um, how to talk about oneself, how to introduce um, yourself, but I hope a little differently than what happens in first and second year. Um, the second chapter talks about uh, current uh, situations, uh, mostly climate change and immigration, which I found are very are issues that are very dear to our students. So I wanted to give them the tools to discuss this. The third is about going abroad um, to study, to travel, but also to um, uh, to give them the tools to, um, for healthcare issues. Um, I know that sometimes what I, I don't find that much is, oh, you have all the body parts, but you don't necessarily have how to communicate about uh, pain, for example. 
And uh, a simple situation that can be com very complex when you go abroad is if you hurt yourself and then you have to go see a doctor and a doctor and express yourself in the target language. Um, so these are little details that I try to plug uh, here and there. Um, to study abroad, for example, to, to change a little bit the narrative, I didn't put Paris or Lyon, but I, I put uh, Romania, uh, where you can go and study in French to get a degree in the French language. So, so I try to get a little off the beaten path for some of the, the content here. Um, the working world, of course, very important for our students as well. Um, so we, um, we talk about this and we talk within this chapter, we talk also about discrimination and uh, uh, parental leave and a lot of other things that revolve around um, the professional world. And the last chapter is about art and um, entertainment, where I try to also go beyond just showing paintings. Um, and all those chapters can be shuffled. I mean, they're not necessarily in order, which I didn't think of that when I was designing, but uh, I had some feedback after the book was released and that um, people thought that they could definitely, you know, put one chapter before the other. Um, so that's definitely an interesting thing to think of. So each chapter obviously has um, the same format. It's very important that, you know, students get used to um, how things work within the book. So we have vocabulary. The grammar, I didn't, I don't want this to be grammar focused. So it's definitely not a textbook that covers everything. So I know uh, from some feedback that I received that some people will complete the book with a grammar, for example. What I include is like quick refreshers on grammar to help um, students remember that grammar matters. Um, when they express themselves and they need to conjugate their verbs and, and agree their adjectives, but we don't go deep into this. So when I teach with a book, for example, all these exercises are homework. We never do grammar in the classroom. Um, I feel that they don't have much time to speak already in the classrooms in general. So this, when I teach this class, the conversation, it's really all about um, uh, speaking in French. Um, so every chapter starts with an introduction. So here I go back to the way to say hello, um, but uh, we cover also different regions of the world. Um, so the introduction is a little longer, perhaps, than what they, what they get between the tu and the vous in France. And also we question this, like every time I, I, I talk about um, culture, there's also a part of me that wants to make them question what they're reading. Um, and even, I mean, for those of you who know the difference between tu and vous, it's a very subtle matter. Um, it's really not, especially nowadays, a lot of people use the tu, but uh, should you do that? Perhaps not. So, but it brings a conversation. So the content that I, I included in the book is also questionable, but it's on purpose. Um, so they present themselves, there's some, um, uh, some quick information about um, France here. I'm French, so I, you know, include more stuff on what I know because I don't want to be um, silly. And also because a lot of the content uh, they can find on their own. Um, so they go back to um, um, trying to talk about themselves. So for example, the part that you see here is really trying to find a way for them to express their own identity the way they want to project themselves um, into the world. So um, there's uh, some notes and questions also about this very um, issue of how you talk about who you are. Um, uh, if you think about France, French people have no clue what it is to be a Native American. So just the title is not going to do things. Um, there's a whole, um, the, the language so is so changing and alive uh, that the Latino, Latina, all these um, identities have to be in a way reappropriated by the student in the classroom so that they can create their own narrative about who they are. So I try to give them tools to do that. Uh, and then I give them here something to explore further. 
Uh, so there's a lot of um, debates, um, of course, lots of um, conversation activities with some prompts. And every time I give them space to add their own vocabulary if they need to. And then there's some simple exercises that they do at home to practice the vocabulary, but mostly everything will be practiced in the classroom through conversation. Um, this is the only part in the book that's in English because it's uh, an authentic document from a blogger who talks about um, the French happy hour, but from um, their point of view. So I thought that was interesting because, uh, and it doesn't matter exactly that it's in English because the point is that they're gonna discuss it in French. There's some grammar review, as I said, very quickly. Um, and the, all these exercises to do at home. And then, so the first chapter is also the opportunity for me to um, explain what the book is about. So there is a, a large part dedicated to questioning lang the, the link between language and identity and what is Écriture Inclusive, which is what I use uh, in this textbook. Um, and then um, every chapter will have a big dossier. So this one is about language and identity. Each chapter will then have a film and a text. Um, here also in the dossier is uh, French sp um, spoken in different um, uh, French speaking countries to see that how all the variation of the language that they can find. So there's French in Cameroon, French in Tahiti and all that. Here is there's a film. The film is always, of course, accompanied with uh, discussion questions. And here there's some a puzzle vocabulary translation. Also, I do uh, include some translation activities. When I teach myself, I do more because um, um, students say they like it. So I do that. Here is a song about um, um, the projects or the suburbs in France. Um, by a um, contemporary um, group of music. And again, they discuss all this. So this is the overall feel of one chapter. And then I have a rubric at the end that is to do and to have fun. Um, so here they do a poem uh, and then, um, so this is, the, so the second chapter is gonna follow the same, um, the same format. We talk about immigration and uh, climate change in this chapter. So this one and the next one in the professional world will also include more collaborative uh, projects. So they get together and they create a business or um, they do research, they go out there, they come back with results and they discuss these results. So there's a lot that they can do themselves. This is an opportunity also to go over something that we I feel glance over in first year, especially because they don't have many tools to discuss it, but the colonial past of France. Um, uh, there is a part on the Algerian war. Um, these things that are not often discussed or really, yeah, it's difficult to discuss this in first year, I guess, but here's the Algerian war and some images. And then again, vocabulary, grammar and the dossier. So here, um, vocabulary lists, the grammar exercises I'll pass quickly. Um, this is the connections between France and the other countries. So um, the values of the Republic, we talk a lot about laicite, the um, um, secular um, Republican values of France, which are, um, which is a fascinating debate for them. Um, Usually it's, it's not a notion that's easy to grasp. Um, and so that's a long dossier. And I wanted to show you the end too. So there's another movie, there's a text, and then uh, this, um, so here they're doing a collage, for example. So I tried to include some fun stuff. So, um, this is um, accompanied with the Google site that I'm going to show you quickly. Nabil, we have about one more minute before we need to join the other group. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, let's see. I do want to show you 
Um, no, that's not it. Hold on. I always go over. All right, so that's the website that goes with it. And it's a Google site uh, accessible to all. Um, so you have answer keys and uh, complementary activities and some resources. So basically, just um, that was just um, an overview of um, how I approach this um, craving, I guess, for talking about other things or talking about things in a more um, open ways um, and showing them part of the French and Francophone world that sometimes they don't necessarily hear about, like I said, like going to study French in Romania, for example. Um, so with this, since we don't have much time. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to break it off because the, we're having our, our final session starting right this now. This is fine, please email me if you have any questions. Yeah, so I wanna thank you, uh, Annabelle, for this. It's fini en beauté, it's really su superb, it's beautiful. Um, so thank you so much. And as she said, you can go visit her, her the site uh, and download the PDF, it's on multiple platforms. And now. That